Angle mode, I mean air mode. I want auto launch, I want return to home. I want to arm it. I want to pull the throttle up. And for some reason it still says angle mode. So I guess it auto launches in angle mode no matter what you have the radio set. Okay, so you notice now that it's running at a slightly lower RPM. And the way auto launch works is that you can set it to start with a lower RPM and the minute you toss it, you'll see that it actually senses the toss and applies the power. So here we go. And now it's flying all by itself and it's climbing up. Went into return to home. So it's climbing up to return to home altitude. And pretty soon it should start to make a turn and there it goes. Now it's turning around and it's gonna circle over the home point. And I'm gonna get back in the shade. Hey everybody, it's me, Mitch, old guy in a drone. And today I wanna to talk about iNav Auto Launch. You know, I've been flying these flying wings and hand launching them and that the hand launching is the hardest part of the whole thing. In fact, it's the point in the flight where you're most likely to do some damage. So uh, I thought INAV I Auto Launch would be a great idea and uh, I just hadn't been having much luck with the, with the settings getting it to work, but I finally got it figured out and I've got it working on both my AR wing and the AR900 wing and the uh, ZOHD Drift and I made some recordings uh, demonstrating it and I just wanted to take a minute and go over uh, some of the iNav settings that I settled on to, uh, and the technique to actually make it work every time. Uh, it's made uh, flying these wings much more enjoyable because uh, you can just give that thing a toss, not worry about cutting your arm up with the propeller and really, uh, and really just concentrate on flying. Okay, let's just briefly talk about some of the settings that I have for the auto launch. There's uh, quite a few of them, some more important than others, but uh, what I've done here is I've loaded iNav and I plugged the uh, ZOHD drift in, and we'll use that as an example. Uh, so let's connect. Connect it to, uh, to the airplane, and all of the uh, auto launch commands are found only in the CLI, there's no graphical interface to them yet. So basically to see what you've got, you go down to the command line, you type get FW underscore launch. And it'll display for you all the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and even dozen commands. And let's go over these real quick. Uh, and the settings that are in here are the ones that I found really worked for both the uh, ZOHD Drift and the uh, AR900 wing, two very popular INAV uh, candidates for uh, airplanes and fixed wings. Uh, launch velocity, I leave it 300. Uh, I think that's default. Uh, launch acceleration, I leave it 1400. I think that's default. Uh, I don't think either of those you need to screw with. Uh, launch maximum angle, I got 180. Now that's the same as the small angle on quads. Basically it's saying that, is there an angle that if I've got the thing upside down, don't perform the auto launch? Well, if I heave it, I've heaved it. I want the, the, uh, the airplane or the fixed wing to do the best that it can before it hits the ground. I, I don't want it to just do nothing. So I set that to 180. That means basically always perform the auto launch. Uh, launch detect time in milliseconds is, in this case, is 30 milliseconds, and that's uh, how long it takes once it senses the inertia of the throw to start the auto launch sequence. Keep that re I keep that really short. You want to keep that just long enough for the propellers to clear your hand on a pusher, uh, but not so long as the thing glides into the ground. 
and crashes before the auto launch wakes up and says, time to go. All right, uh, throttle is one of the more important ones. And basically, uh, it's in microseconds like most radio settings. So 1850 here means 85% throttle. Uh, there's many schools of thought. This is all trial and error. You know, you have to figure out for yourself what the best uh, climb out power setting is for whatever you happen to be putting this on. In the case of the AR wing, I found 1850 works just great. 85% throttle. Now this is a, uh, the, this launch idle throttle is a setting that if that's set to uh, less than a thousand or a thousand, that means when you arm auto launch, the motor will not be running. In this case, I have it set to 1300 and that means that when I launch arm the quad with auto, or, not quad, arm the plane in auto launch mode that the motor will spin up. In this case, 1300 equates to 30% throttle. Now, that's on the Zod Drift and the Zod Drift has a pod mounted motor above the fuselage. With, so when you grab the fuselage underneath, there's absolutely no chance of, of hitting the prop on your arm or your hand on the way by and having a little bit of motor running before you throw it uh, is going to get you a smoother launch, I think. Now, on the AR wing, where if you grab it from underneath the fuselage and give it a heave, that prop can cut up your arm on the way by. So, uh, it, in, in my case, I have that set to 1,000. That means the motor does not run until that airplane has cleared my hand, and that's what the delay setting is for. So. If you want the thing to run a little bit, or a little bit of power, which helps smooth out the launch, set that. If you want the thing to not do anything until it's clear of any of your body parts, uh, I would uh, just set that to 1,000. Motor delay of 40, uh, it's just what it sounds like, 40 milliseconds. Launch spin up time, 10. If you've got a, a really big motor with a real heavy prop, you don't just want to pour full power to it. You want to have, you want it to accelerate up from nothing slowly and you can, you can uh, increase that time here with launch spin up time. Launch minimum time, I don't deal with that. It says zero, I leave all this default. Uh, now this is an important one, uh, launch timeout. That's how long the launch sequence is going to run. So from the time it senses the launch, 5,000 milliseconds on this is five seconds. After five seconds, it will stop the auto launch and turn the control of your airplane back to you or put it in any pre-selected modes that you, might, that you might have selected before you did the auto launch. Now, what I do on these things is I set the auto launch, I set it to acro mode, and I also set it to return to home. Then, after I launch the airplane, it climbs up for however many seconds this nav launch uh, timeout is, in case five seconds, and then it looks and sees that the return to home is active, so then it immediately goes to return to home altitude and just starts circling around. Now, this is great for FPV. You, you, you don't even need to have the transmitter or your goggles with you. You can walk right out to the flight line, take your airplane, make sure that uh, you're in the launch mode and launch mode is armed, give it a heave, don't even take a look. Turn around, go back, get your radio, get your goggles, set everything up, get yourself all adjusted, sit down in an easy chair if you want to. And then when you're ready to fly, you just turn off the re return to home mode and the airplane will stop loitering around home. And uh, it's, it's really terrific at a stress-free way to launch a model. The next uh, maximum altitude I don't deal with. I don't worry about that. But climb angle is important because it depends on your airplane. Uh, on on the, uh, the little drift, I use 20 degrees. Um, and that seems like a, a pretty good climb angle for most of the things I've tried this on, but the allowed range is 5 to 45. So that's a setting. That's one of the settings that you have to pretty well trial and error on, on your airplane and make sure that uh, the airplane's capable of delivering what it is that you put in. Now, after you've changed any of these things, and I'm hoping by now you know how to change something in the CLI, 
uh, don't forget to type save, S-A-V-E. Don't forget to type save your changes in, and you'll know you saved them when the uh, uh, flight controller reboots and takes you back into, uh, into INAV. So that's a summary of the commands. Uh, let's go take a look at some launches. So the first thing is set on auto launch. Put it in air mode. Put it in return to home. Arm the quad. Raise the throttle. And give it a little toss. And away it goes. What could be simpler? And I can monitor the flight here without the goggles by looking at my little my little monitor, which says it's in en route to home. And right now it's just going to fly circles around the home point at an altitude of 165 feet. There we go. So I can just leave it fly in return to home mode after the auto launch. And so far, I haven't touched the radio. And that's terrific because that gives you time to, uh, to actually get your goggles set up and uh, adjust it. And then when you're all ready, you, you turn it out of, out of return to home mode and away you go. Meanwhile, it is holding its altitude very nicely. It's flying about 30 miles an hour and uh, pretty stable. Well, I hope you found this useful. Uh, any questions or comments, uh, just put them down below and uh, in the video, and I'll see if I can help you. Thanks for watching, and uh, take the rest of the day off. Go play with your airplanes, and have a great day. Till next time.